What is up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the numbers. These are my full car breakdown and predictions for UFC Vegas 87. We got Shamil Gazeev going against Jarzino Rosenstruck. And we are back for another full card breakdown and prediction video this week. We are back in the Apex. It is a card that is headlined by Shamil Gazeev and Jarzino Rosenstruck. Got a fun heavyweight fight. And yeah, it's a card where as of like a couple hours ago, we, well, we had nine confirmed scheduled bouts on the card. And then just a couple hours ago, uh, Ludovic Klein, who was supposed to fight Joel Alvarez, Alvarez pulled out. And then just a couple hours ago, they announced that AJ Cunningham... Uh, Contender Series alum is going to be stepping in. So right now, at the moment of recording, we have 10 confirmed bouts for UFC Vegas 87. On top of that, we have Matt Schnell and Alex Perez on the card who have both combined for like over 20 canceled fights in their entire career. So we could be looking at a short card, but yeah, it's a fun card. I think, you know, in terms of the fights on the card, I'm looking forward to pretty much every single fight um, back in the apex. It is what it is, but we get fights on a Saturday and that's definitely what I'm looking forward to coming off of the best week of the year. Last week up 6.12 units. It was a special night on top of that hit the prelim main card and hail Mary parlay. Um, yeah, everything just came through. The reads were there. The results were there. Shout out to Hayani Barcelos getting a, a third round submission, cashing the under two and a half in the sub prop. Luis Rodriguez was a very strong take of mine. I didn't think Denise Bondar was you know, UFC caliber, kind of got fraud vibes from the guy. And Luis Rodriguez broke him in the second round, got the sub as well. So, yeah, very good night last week, looking to keep the ball rolling, looking to go on a three-event winning streak after winning here for UFC Vegas 87. Not sure I'll have a ton of action. If you guys like big chalky parlays, if you guys like four-leg parlays that come out to plus 110, uh, this is the card for you. We have massive favorites. Um, in terms of these 10 scheduled bouts, I think like eight of those fighters are minus 250 or greater. So it's a one of those cards. It's, it's a chalky card, but you know it is a card nonetheless. Before we get into it and break it all down, if you guys could please do me a couple favors. One, leave a like on the video. Two, subscribe to the channel. And then also check out DFSbythenumbers.com. There you'll find all my other content that you do not see on YouTube. Um, and then also do want to shout out Prize Picks. Use promo code DFSBTN and get yourself a 100% deposit bat match up to $100. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. I say we get into it. This might be a shorter video because, again, we don't have a ton of fights to talk about. I'm going to briefly touch on Rob Roses Jr., Ricky Tercio. So, obviously, this fight got canceled five minutes before it was, start was supposed to start. Dana White says this fight's happening on UFC Vegas 87. They announced it, that it's going to be happening at UFC Vegas 87. But Ricky Tercio's posted on Instagram that it was fake news. And I don't think it's going to happen. They're saying it's going to be at a potential catch weight at 140 on Tapology. It's listed right now as a rumored uh, bout. But judging by Ricky Tercio's Instagram, it doesn't look like this fight's going to take place. We'll have to see. Maybe it does. But Ricky Tercio's posted a video saying that, of course, you know, this fight was fake news. He didn't sign for the fight for this weekend. And then also he made another video, you know, drinking a Coca-Cola and, and basically celebrating his win, you know, saying that he beat Ra Rosa Jr. And you know, knowing Ricky Tercios, I, I kind of think he actually believes that he beat Rick, uh, that he beat Ra Rosas Jr. So I don't think it happens. If it does, the pick is is Ra Rosas Jr. But if it doesn't, just completely ignore the break. There's not really no breakdown because I don't think it happens. But if it does, I'm sticking with my pick, Ra Rosas Jr. I think this fight being at the apex favors him a lot more. It's not at high elevation. We're in the smaller cage, so yeah, the picks Ra Rosas Jr. But we'll see if this fight happens or not. Next, we got uh, Ludovic Klein going against AJ Cunningham. Uh, Ludovic Klein was supposed to fight Joel Alvarez. Alvarez pulls out in steps. Dana White's Contender Series alum, AJ Cunningham. We got uh, Ludovic Klein. He's 29 years old, five foot seven, with a 72 and a half inch reach, 24 and one, and three one and one no contest in his last five fights. AJ Cunningham, 29 years old, five foot ten, with a 71 inch reach, 11 and three, and four and one in his last five fights. We do not have odds, but. Ludovic Klein is going to be a favorite, and he's going to be a decent-sized favorite as well. So, yeah, this fight, it, it makes no sense other than let's get Ludovic Klein a fight. Apparently, they couldn't have found you know any other lightweight on the roster to step in on short notice. So they bring in AJ Cunningham. Well, I don't actually don't mind AJ Cunningham. I think he's solid, but I'm kind of shocked they signed him after his performance on the Contender Series. It was a very, very poor performance. I mean, it was a fun fight, but... 
it was kind of hard to watch. The, the first round was pretty competitive. AJ Cunningham ate a lot of shots with his face. He showed a lot of toughness. Um, but it was competitive up until like the last five seconds. He got dropped very badly by Stephen Wynn. And then like the fight could have been stopped. The fight probably should have been stopped. But, you know, Mark Smith did not stop the fight. The fight went into the second round, and Cunningham continued to show the toughness. He stuck in there for a while and then just kept getting beat up, you know, in the second round. And then finally, it was like a, a mercy stoppage. The ref said, no more. Um, you're done. He, he, was, he wasn't even out on his feet, but he just took a ton of damage. And that's the thing with AJ Cunningham. This is a big, you know, long range of guy. He's going to have a height advantage here. He's actually going to be able to reach his advantage. And I think he's a, a skilled fighter, super tough guy. But, yeah, he is very, very hittable. Very, very hittable. Um, should be Ludovic Klein here, you know, Ludovic Klein, maybe even by knockout, but, you know, even just landing the bigger shots across 15 can even mix in some takedowns as well. I've seen AJ Cunningham taken down and Ludovic Klein's been on a pretty solid run as of late. In his last uh, five fights, he is 3-1 and, and one draw. Had a great uh, underdog win against Ignacio Bahamondes. Had a great underdog win against Mason Jones. Had a great, I think, underdog win against Devontae Smith. So he's been coming through as an underdog. He's been looking a lot better. I was kind of worried about him, you know, dropping back-to-back -back fights against Michael Trezano and Nate Landwehr. But seems to be kind of putting everything together here. And this should be a very, very winnable fight for him. AJ Cunningham has fought at featherweight for every single fight up until his last fight. I think his last fight, he made his debut at lightweight. So this is going to be AJ Cunningham's, you know, second fight at lightweight coming in here on short notice against Ludovic Klein, who has had a full camp. It's got to be Klein here. I'll say Klein by decision. I, I do think AJ Cunningham's tough, but yeah, glad we, we get to see Klein stick on the card here, but uh, not really sure it's, it's going to be too competitive here. Moving on, we got uh, Christian Leroy Duncan going against Claudio Hibero. We got Christian Leroy Duncan, 28 years old, six foot two with a 79 inch reach, nine and one, and four and one in his last five fights. Claudio Hibero, 31 years old, six foot one with a 77 inch reach, 11 and four, and three and two in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds, which we do have some odds for the rest of the fights here. We have Christian Leroy Duncan. He, believe it or not, he opened up as a dog, and he's currently minus 290. And Claudio Hibero opened up as like a minus 250 favorite. Like they must have made a mistake or something. Like I don't know what happened, but they definitely made a mistake. And now we have Ribeiro as a big dog at plus 250. And yeah, this is one of those fights where I think it's a fun fight. Um, yeah, this is a fight where I think that Christian Leroy Duncan's just a much, 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 much more skilled fighter. You know, there were some high hopes for Christian Leroy Duncan. This was, I believe, a Cage Warriors guy. And these Cage Warrior guys, you know, they typically get a lot of hype, maybe. Um, a little bit too much hype at times, but you know, he came in there, made his debut against Dusko Todorovic. There was that injury knockout, and then he fought Armin Petrosian, a fight where a very lackluster performance, uh, to be honest, and I think he lost a lot of hype, but you know, bounced right back against Dennis Tuoluin, just beating the brakes off of him and finishing him in the second round by by a brutal knockout. Looked really good in that fight. Really like the striking of Christian Leroy Duncan, has a ton of tools on the feet, has very good defensive wrestling, is able to keep fights standing if he needs to, and maybe he tries to go for takedowns, um, but at the very least, I could see him going out there kind of doing like he did against Dennis Tuoluin, uh, pushing Hebera against the cage, getting him tired, wearing him out, and then, you know, in that second round, starting to really put it on him. I don't think Hibero has the best cardio, and I definitely don't think Hibero has the best striking defense. Um, <laughs> his striking defense right now is 31%, and that's a problem. That is a serious problem against these big middleweights that hit hard. We saw what Roman Kopilov did to this guy, that nasty head kick knockout. out. Abdul Razak al -Hassan knocked this guy out in the second round. I think Christian Leroy Duncan does the same thing. I think Christian Leroy Duncan uh, drags his fight into deeper waters and finishes Claudio Hibero late second round there by knockout. Moving on, we have uh, Abdul Karim al Sawadi going against Loik Rajabov. We got Al Sawadi, he's 28 years old, 5'8 with a 69 inch reach, 15 and 3 and 5 and 0. In his last five fights, Loik Rajabov, 33 years old, 5'11 with a 69 inch reach, 17, 5 and 1, and 3 and 2. In his last five fights, we'll take a look at the odds we have. Uh, Abdul, so, um, Abdul Karim Al Sawadi opened up. Plus 150 as a dog. He's now the favorite, minus 160. Loik Rajabov opened up minus 175, currently plus 140. So, yeah, there are two fight or two fights on this entire card where the favorite is less than minus 200. So I feel like Loik Rajabov is going to be a popular dog this week, really because there aren't a ton of great underdog options. 
And yeah, you know what I'll say about Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi is this is a guy that was a massive dog on the contender series. I think on that on that week he was uh, the biggest underdog on the entire card, and he was taken on a, a very good fighter in Chad uh, Hardwick, who had a lot of hype. He was a Cage Warriors guy, and yeah, I mean Hardwick is a very good fighter. And what what really stuck out to me in the Al Sawadi fight was the the fact or George Hardwick, my bad, George Hardwick. So what really stuck out to me in that fight was the fact that you go and watch Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi really any other fight and he's taking guys down. His offensive wrestling is good, really good grounded pound, really good cardio, can get late finishes. Um he's 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 a wrestler, like outside of that, you know, George Hardwick fight. But in that George Hardwick fight, he went out there and outstruck George Hardwick in pretty much every single round. It was 30 27 on all three judges scorecards. Just like a shocking shocking performance in a, in a good way from Al Sawadi. He showed that not only can he go out there and, and take a lot of guys down, but he can go out there and, you know, put up a ton of volume and, and outstrike a very good fighter, a very hyped fighter, or at least was hyped fighter in, in George Hardwick. So that was an incredible performance there. On the like Rajabov side, this is a guy who is a good wrestler in his own right. You know, he got 11 takedowns against Esteban Rivovics, which is not really saying much considering Rivovics does get taken down by a gust of wind. But, you know, Rajabov can wrestle. On the feet, though, he is very low volume. Um, he can be outlanded. We've seen him hurt in, in both of his UFC fights. Esteban Rivovix rocked him multiple times in that fight, dropped him as well. We saw Mateus Rebeksi just destroy him on the feet, eventually finishing him in the second round. Um, so, yeah, on the feet, Rajabov, I do think, is going to be at a significant disadvantage here. Uh, I think he's going to get heavily outvolumed by Kareem Al Sawadi. I guess what it comes down to is whether or not, like Rajabov, is able to take down Al Sawadi. And I'm not really convinced he does. Um, I haven't really seen anybody take down Al Sawadi. With that said, could it happen here potentially? But I kind of like Al Sawadi to, to keep this fight upright. And, and when it's upright, I favor him all day here. So I am going to take Kareem Abdul Al Sawadi. Dang, that's a mouthful. I'm going to take him to win this fight by decision. Like Rajabov, extremely tough, extremely durable. I don't think has the best card. We've seen him um, get really tired in a bunch of fights, but I'll say he does last to the, the final bell. Give me, Kareem, give me Abdul Kareem Al Sawadi to win this fight by decision. Okay, moving on. We have Javid Basharat going against Ayman Zahabi. We got uh, Javid Basharat. Who is 28 years old, 5 foot 9, with a 69 inch reach, 14 and 0, and 4 0 in one no contest in his last five fights? Iman Zahabi, 36 years old, 5 foot 8, with a 68 inch reach, 10 and 2, and 3 and 2 in his last five fights. We have Javid Basharat opened at minus 400. He's the second biggest favorite on the card at minus 700. Zahabi opened up plus 330, and he's currently plus 500. And yeah, there's not much to say here. I mean, it's really hard for me to ever pick Ayman Zahabi to to win a fight just because of his style. I mean, he's now 36 years old at Bantamweight, and he's just so low volume. I mean, if you go watch his fights, I mean, there's not a ton going on really ever. And he's one of those guys who is a very good counter striker, right? And he's one of those guys that limits the volume of his opponents and... His fights can be like very unbearable to watch at times. Like that Ricky Tercios fight was was tough to watch, but yeah, he does a really good job at limiting his uh, opponent's volume, and, and he can knock guys out. He has knocked out Arichi Long in the first round. He knocked out Draco Rodriguez in the first round. So he's really reliant on that on that power. Um, do think he has some grappling in his back pocket as well, but he doesn't really use it. I expect this fight to take place on the feet, and when it does, it's just. The minute winnings all in favor of of Javid Basharat. This guy's an incredible minute winner, and you know Ayman Zahabi's the opposite of that. Ayman Zahabi's probably not going to throw much at all. I think Ayman Zahabi's reliant on a knockout. I think this you know Zahabi has the definition of a puncher's chance here, and him being the first one to knock out Javid Basharat is not really something I want to pick. Like yes, he knocked out Avicii Long, but. And yes, he knocked out Draco Rodriguez. I just think Javid is on a much higher level than both those guys. So it should be Javid here. Javid by decision. You know, Javid was a great finisher outside the UFC. Inside the UFC, he's shown really no finishing instinct whatsoever. So yeah, it's Javid for me. Javid should probably cruise here to a decision 30-27. As long as his chin holds up and, you know, Ayman doesn't land that big shot, he should, he should probably look minus 700 here. Uh, moving on, we have Umar Nurmagomedov going against uh, Bogzat. Al Makan, we got Umar Nurmagomedov, 28 years old, 5 foot 8 with a 69 inch reach, 16 and 0 and 5 and 0 in his last 5 fights. 
Boxon, he's 26 years old, 5 foot 7, 17 and 1 in 5 and 1 or 5 and 0 oh in his last 5 fights. So we got Umar Nurmagomedov here, the biggest favorite on the entire card. He opened up minus 550, currently minus 1200. Uh Boxon, he opened up plus 400. He's currently plus 800. Weird matchmaking here. Like I think a lot of people expected Umar to fight somebody, you know, in the top 10, in the top 5 even. But he's taking like a massive step back and he's taking on this this box at guy who, by the way, I think he's I think, you know, box act's pretty good. I think he's a very good fighter. But Umar just went out there and beat, you know, Hayani Barcelos, you know, who's a, who had a great performance against Christian Quinones and I kind of expected him to yeah, get, get a top 10 guy, maybe even top five. I think he was even scheduled to fight uh, Corey Sanhagen and Sanhagen had to pull out or actually I think it was Umar that had to pull out of that fight. Um, that was the fight where Rob Font stepped in. So, yeah, but anyways, he's taking on uh, this box out Almacon guy who I think is really good. I think he's a solid striker. I've seen him knock multiple guys out, has a nice head kick. Um, he can wrestle offensively as well, grapple. You know, defensive wrestling seems to check out. I think he's pretty good everywhere. The problem is he's taken on Umar Nurmagomedov. And the thing about this fight is, although I think Bogzad is, is a really good fighter, I, I truly do, and I think he'll have a lot of success, the problem is Umar Nurmagomedov is just going to be better everywhere. You know, Umar is going to be the better striker. Umar is going to be the better wrestler. Umar is going to be the better grappler. Umar has fought the much better competition, and it's not even close. So, yeah, should be Umar Nurmagomedov, but, you know, minus 1,200 favorite. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Give me Umar Nurmagomedov to go out there and finish uh, Bogzad here in the second round by submission. All right, moving on. We got another big favorite, which is the theme on this card. Steve Urseg taking on Matt Schnell. We got Steve Urseg, 28 years old, 5'8", with a 68.5-inch reach, 11-1, 5-0 in his last five fights. Matt Schnell, 34 years old, 5'8", with a 70-inch reach, 16-7, and 2-2, and, and one no contest in his last five fights. Steve Urseg opened at minus 210, currently minus 320. Matt Schnell opened up plus, two, plus 185, currently plus 270. So... Um, I'm hoping this fight does happen, but as always with Matt Schnell, we don't know if it will. And I was counting the canceled bouts with Matt Schnell, and let's double check. I mean, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight or nine uh, canceled bouts for Matt Schnell in his UFC career. There's been some times where he got sick at weigh-in day. Uh, there's been times where I think he missed weight. There's been times where there's just been you know cancellation after cancellation with Matt Schnell. And especially like later in his career, like ever since like since 2020, actually, he had he's had eight or nine canceled bouts. Um, and prior to that, there were there weren't there weren't any in the UFC. So I'm not sure what's going on with Matt Schnell, but you know this guy is 34 years old at this point. I worry about Matt Schnell. I worry about the chin of Matt Schnell. This is a guy who's been finished in six of his seven losses at flyweight. He's taking a ton of damage. He's only getting older. And, yeah, I mean, he, he got knocked out brutally in his last fight against Mateus Nicolau up until, I think he got dropped three times in that fight. Um, his last win was against Sumadarji in a fight where, I mean, the ref probably could have stopped it. It was an incredible comeback. One of my favorite fights, honestly, of all time. But, I mean, Matt Schnell was literally knocked out on his feet several times in that fight. So that's another fight where he took a ton of damage. He got club and subbed by Brandon Roy Val. Um, you know, he's been knocked out multiple, multiple times in the UFC. The chin has always been a problem with Matt Schnell. And the fact that he, he does have a tough cut, it looks like, to fly weight. He is taking a ton more damage. He is getting older. I think it's all finally catching up to Matt Schnell. And I'm not even sure he shows up. I mean, if he does show up, you know, I'm picking Steve Ursig, obviously. The thing with Steve Ursig is he's not a knockout artist. Um, he has one knockout on his record, but he does have some power. Um, he does have some club and subs. He even hurt David Dvorak in his short notice, notice debut. Can't talk short notice debut. Um, I think that was in Canada. The Nunez Aldana card. Nunez Aldana card hurt David Dvorak. Looked like he was on his on the verge of finishing him, but Dvorak super tough survived. I don't think Matt Schnell is uh, as durable as a Dvorak. I think Steve Urseg hurt Schnell here at one point. The weird thing about this fight is, you know, skill for skill. I think these guys are you know, pretty similar. Like, Matt Schnell's a good fighter. He's a very good fighter. He's fought great competition. He always has that incredible grappling in his back pocket. The strikings came a long way and looks really good. But just the durability of the guy. I mean, 
you know, a gust of wind can can knock down Matt Schnell at this point. So although Steve Ursig's not a murderous power puncher, I, I don't think he needs to be. So yeah, give me Ursig here. I think it's a club and sub. I think he hurts Matt Schnell. This fight hits the mat and he subs him shortly after. So give me Steve Ursig to win this fight. I'll say he wins this fight by second round submission. Moving on, we got Mohamed Makayev going against Alex Perez, a fight that might not happen, you know, considering the, the track record of Alex Perez, but we'll talk about it anyway. We got Mohamed Makayev, 23 years old, 5'7", with a 70-inch reach, 10-0, and 5-0 and and in his last five fights. Alex Perez, 31 years old, 5'6", with a 65-and-a-half-inch reach, 24-7, and seven, and 3-2 and two in his last five fights. Another big favorite here in uh, Makayev. Makayev opened up minus 325. He's currently minus 355. Prez opened up plus 275. He's currently plus 290. And yeah, so we talked about Matt, Matt Schnell, you know, with all these Matt Schnell canceled bouts. How about Alex Perez? I, I counted uh, yesterday. I think it was like 14. And I'll double check. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14 canceled bouts for, uh, for Alex Perez and his career. And this is Alex Perez who... Especially as of late, like since since 2020, just like Matt Schnell, since 2020, he's had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 canceled bouts in like two fights. In the two fights he's had, he got submitted in one minute by Alexander Pantoja, and he got submitted in two minutes by Davis and Figueredo, which are those guys incredible fighters? Yes, but holy crap, this guy has what? couple minutes cage time, three minutes cage time in the last four years. I mean, it's crazy. And I don't know what it is with Perez. Like, is he, you know, dealing with injury? Like, what's going on with Perez? I know the weight cut's tough for him. Um, is he, you know, looking at or doing things outside the cage? I know he opened up a uh, acai bar. Um, so he's working on that. He's, he's the owner of an acai bar at this point. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Alex Perez, but I hope he can show up. And, it, and if he does... The, 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 this is why this fight's so tricky, right? If we get the best version of Alex Perez, because this guy was on an incredible, you know, run, you know, finishing, you know, Juicy A Formiga, Jordan Espinoza. He fought for a title. I mean, he fought for a title just two fights ago, right? You know, this guy had a good amount of hype on him, and rightfully so. He's a very good fighter. Wrestling background. Has some jujitsu offensively. Um, really good striking as well. Very dangerous. Um... If we get the best version of Alex Perez, yeah, this this line's off. This line's stupid. But the fact of the matter is I don't know if we're going to get the, the best version of Alex Perez. Um, I don't even know if he shows up, right? So um, I think the, the the best version of Alex Perez is, is probably you know gone at this point. Like the last win he has was literally, what, four, almost five years, like a long time ago at this point. So, yeah, it's it's got to be Mikhaev, right? He's 23 years old. He's much younger. He's much hungrier. He's much more active. Like, what is Alex Perez going to look like after, like, a two-year layoff? And even when he fought two years ago, the fight lasted a minute. We, we saw nothing of Alex Perez other than other than Pantoja taking his back and subbing him. So it's Micaiah for me. Um, but I'm, I'm interested in this fight, right? I'm interested to see how Alex Perez does look. Because if we do get the, the best version of Perez, which, again, I don't think is the case, this line's off because Perez is a very good fighter, but I'm taking Makayev here. I think he probably subs Perez. I mean, Perez has been submitted, I think, five times, and Makayev has, like, multiple submissions in the UFC. Um, they are against, you know, Malcolm Gordon, which he is a black belt. You know, Jafel Feely is a black belt. Tim Elliott, I think, he's even a black belt. So he's submitting black belts. So. Um, but those are, like, lower-level guys in the flyweight division, whereas Alex Perez has fought for a title a while ago. Give me Makayev here. Makayev with a, a third round submission like he typically likes to do but uh just weird fight and it, it, again it might not even happen if Alex Perez pulls out once more another weird fight here we got Eric Anders going against Jamie Pickett we got Eric Anders 36 years old six foot one with a 75 inch reach 15 and eight two and three in his last five fights Jamie Pickett 35 years old six foot two with an 80 inch reach 13 and 10 and one and four in his last five fights Never thought I'd see the day, but uh, Eric Anders is a minus 400 favorite. Wow. Um, opened up minus 250. Jamie Pickett opened up plus 210. He's currently plus 330. I don't think this fight's going to be exciting. Like, I think this is a cage pushy. Um, Eric Anders is probably going to have some takedowns here. Not tons going to go on in the strike. Like, I think this fight's going to be uh, terrible, to be honest, you know, calling it how it is. But, I mean, it's it's really hard to pick Jamie Pickett to win a fight, um, really against anybody. 
So yeah, Eric Anders, however he wants. Um, on the feet, Eric Anders has the advantage, higher volume, more power. Eric Anders, the more physically strong fighter, should be able to push Pickett against the cage, win minutes there, should be able to take him down as well. I mean, this is a guy in Anders who attempted, I think it was like 20-some takedowns just a couple fights ago against um, Jung Young Park. 24 takedowns attempted. I mean, if he attempts 24 takedowns here against Pickett, he probably gets a solid amount of them. He attempted 11 takedowns against Mark andre Barrio, got one of them. But, I mean, if he comes out there with that type of game plan, should be able to, you know, win minutes against the cage, should be able to win some minutes on the ground. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Eric Anders minus 400. Never thought I'd see the day, but he is taking on Jimmy Pickett. Give me Eric Anders to win this fight. Win this fight by greasy, greasy decision. Moving on, we got the co-main event already. Uh, quick show today. Uh, we got Vitor Petrino going against Tyson Pedro. We got Petrino, 26 years old, six foot two with a 77 and a half inch reach, 10 and 0. Obviously, five and 0 in his last five fights. Tyson Pedro, 32 years old, six foot three with a 79 inch reach, 10 and four, and three and two in his last five fights. You guessed it. Another big favorite. Petrino opened up minus 350, currently minus 285, and uh, Tyson Pedro opened up uh, plus 285, and currently. Uh, plus 245 so yeah I mean I gotta go Petrino here just due to the fact that anytime Tyson Pedro reaches the second round he just has nothing left um, Tyson Pedro's 0-3 in fights that have reached the second round which is a huge red flag so you know could he catch Petrino early maybe maybe he could maybe he could you know he's a you know Tyson Pedro's a good fighter at least early on in that first round has a ton of power has a good grappling game as well it's just Petrino is going to be the one that has the much better cardio, and it's weird with Petrino. This is a guy that doesn't look like he should have this incredible cardio, but he does. I mean, Petrino's went a hard three rounds like he did against Tercali. Petrino does have second and third round finishes where Pedro doesn't. Pedro doesn't. Pedro, all of his wins come in the first round. I mean, all 10 wins have came in the first round, so I think Pedro's kind of first round or bust, and I, it's hard to kind of pick him there. Pedro... um, could he clip him? Maybe, but, you know, Petrino, he's shown a very good chin. This guy's very tough, very durable. He just has a ton more ways to win. You know, Petrino can go out there. He can strike. He's a ton of power. And then, most importantly, Petrino can mix in takedowns as well, which is kind of a, a cool wrinkle he's brought, you know, since coming into the UFC. Because you go watch this guy outside the UFC. He's really doing none of that. He's just going out there and taking guys' heads off, which he's good at. But he's coming to the UFC and, and completing a lot of takedowns. Like, all of a sudden, this guy is a very good wrestler, very good grappler, getting submissions as well. So, you know, just a really well-rounded fighter here in Petrino. As long as he can survive the first five minutes, it's it's his fight. Um, he should break Tyson Page and probably finish him late second, third round by, by TKO here. So, give me Petrino to win this fight um, after he survives and uh, weathers an early storm there. All right, next we got the main event. Of UFC Vegas 87, Shamil Gazeev going against Jarzino Rosenstruck. We got Gazeev, 34 years old, 6'4", with a 78-inch reach, 12-0, 5-0 in his last five fights. Jarzino Rosenstruck, 35 years old, 6'2", with a 78-inch reach, 13-5, and 2-3 and and in his last five fights. We'll take a look at the odds. Gazeev opened up minus 150, currently minus 150. Rosenstruck opened up plus 130, is currently plus 130. And it's weird to me um that this is the main event considering Gazeev literally just fought on the contender series I kid you not less than a year ago like what was it it was like seven months like it wasn't too long ago seven eight months ago <laughs> Gazeev fought on uh the contender series like it wasn't that long ago against Greg Velasco and then he makes his debut in the UFC in mid-December mid I think it was the last car of, of the year Mid-December, makes his debut against Martin Budai, beats Martin Budai, which is great, and now he's he's headlining a card. So, not sure why that is. You know, does the UFC really want to build this guy up? You know, does uh, they, do they have a lot of faith in this guy? Are they are they struggling, to, you know, for a main event for this card? I'm not sure what it is, but, you know, Gazeev is getting just skyrocketed to a, a headline and, and headlining a card is, is kind of crazy. He's going against Jarzino Rosenstruck, who has fought the who's who. You know, when he's losing, it's to the, the best of the best. It's to Francis Ngannou. It's to Cyril Gaon. It's to, you know, Curtis Blades, Alexander Volkov, Jonathan Amade. All these fighters are, are very good fighters. You take a look at his wins. Decent decent wins, honestly. I'll start over him. Good win. Um, Junior Dos Santos, although Junior Dos Santos was towards the end of his career, that's a good win. Augustus Sakai, eh. 
Chris Dawkins, eh. But, you know, solid wins. At least, you know, they're better wins than what Shamil has, Martin Bedayan, and Greg Velasco. So it's definitely a step up for Shamil Gazeev. Um, and for Jarzina Rosenstruck, it's just another fight. This is a tough fight to call. I know everybody's taking Shamil Gazeev, um, which, yeah, I mean, he can go out there and knock out Rosenstruck, but, you know, vice versa, Rosenstruck can knock out Gazeev. What concerns me about Gazeev is the cardio. This is a guy that's been over one and a half rounds, I believe, once in his 12 fights. Uh, the majority of his wins do come in the first round, and he does have a couple wins, like, early second round. I think he has, like, three or four early, early second round wins like he did in the Budai fight. And then he does have one decision win, which was not the best look. He got very tired um, and kind of greased his way to a decision in that fight. Um, Jarzino Rosenstruck has been five rounds. Jarzino Rosenstruck has been three rounds multiple times. Jarzino Rosenstruck has a fifth round knockout. So if this fight does get extended, yeah, it heavily favors Rosenstruck. It's just, you know, will it get extended? And I'm not sure it does. So um, I don't know. You know, Gazeev, he has a couple passes here. I think he could potentially take down Rosenstruck, but... If he doesn't finish Rosenstruck, um, and this fight does get to the second round, I think it starts to get very interesting. I don't have any confidence in this pick. I will not be probably betting this fight, to be honest, other than like a, a prop that maybe sticks out, which there there is. But uh, I'll take Rosenstruck. I'll take him to win by second round knockout. But, I mean, that, that this pick can age very badly, very fast. I don't think this fight's going to last that long. But Rosenstruck has fought the much better competition I think he has the much better cardio by a, a significant margin, and I will take him to go out there and spoil the the Shamil Gazeev party on Saturday. So yeah, there you guys have it. <laughs> what a card! I mean, it's a, it's a good it's a good card of fights, but holy crap! Um, I think, like I said, I think ten confirmed scheduled bouts right now with potential of a couple guys that are going to maybe pull out of the fight. I mean, it's it's kind of a mess this week, but next week we do have UFC 299. I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to start digging into UFC 299. I'm going to try to get out some early content, some early bets, because this is a card where, I'll be honest, I don't see myself being too heavily invested. Great card for parlays, but um, I don't know. I, I really don't want to parlay up a minus 1,200 Umar. I don't want to parlay up a minus 700 Javid Basharat. I don't want to play Eric Anders at minus 400. So it's uh, from a betting perspective, I'm not I'm not too sure yet. But I'm sure some things will stick out. Uh, yeah, guys, leave a like on your way out. Subscribe to the channel. Check out DFSbythenumbers.com. There you'll find all my other content for the week. Um, we'll be getting that out. And then again, going to be looking at a UFC 299 early. Maybe beat some line movement on some plays. Maybe come up with some things early on. But yeah, that guys, that's about it. Uh, best of luck for UFC Vegas 87. And we'll talk to you guys very soon. See you later.